Welcome to Idaho Vikings Rhino 8 Software Tutorials for the Pathologically Frustrated. 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 Today's topic is the construction plane, also known as the seaplane. When you first open Rhino, by default there are actually three seaplanes or construction planes in play. So you have a top view construction plane, which is the same as the uh, construction plane being used in the perspective view. And then you have a front view in the lower left and a right view in the lower right. And so you can see that the top and the perspective view are the same. If I uh, draw a square in the top view, you'll see that it's showing up over in the uh, perspective view as well. And, and you can see, yeah, you're, uh, I'm drawing it on the, the same plane. Now, if I only had this top view open and didn't have any of these other views open, when I'm drawing on here, I really wouldn't have any idea where this uh, square is relative to the other seaplanes in space. You know, I wouldn't know if this was near or far. So now I just deleted that uh, square that I made, and I'll open uh, some other squares that I have already set up for each of the seaplanes, and uh, here's a top view. The red is for the top view seaplane, and then I can turn on the right view is green, and the front view is blue. So now I've got these uh, squares that correspond to each seaplane. That really isn't all that obvious what this means. Uh, down in the right view, for example, it looks like this is a two-dimensional representation, but it's not actually. Uh, if I come down here and set the view to perspective, then I can see, well, wait a minute, you know, that is actually a 3D view, and I can rotate it around. Uh, here we'll zoom in and slide over a little bit. And uh, I, I can rotate that one around. And so I'm going to come over here to the front view, and I can do the same thing and uh, change the view to uh, perspective. And uh, there you can see what that seaplane is. All this really isn't obvious when I first got into uh, Rhino. It, it seemed very two-dimensional in these two windows. But it's not really. It's three-dimensional, and you've got to keep that in mind. Now, when you first get into Rhino, it's very easy to fool yourself about what's actually happening. Uh, for example, I'll uh, draw a nice little square, and I think, oh, I'll just draw a square on this green box here. And, uh, boy, won't that be fun. And so I draw that green box, and, no, wait a minute, it's gone. Well, what just happened to my green box? It's, it's, uh, let's, let's, well, let's look, let's, let's rotate. The, oh, there it is. It's back here. So what I did was, uh, you know, I, I thought, well, I was going to draw on this, uh, th this nice green plane, but instead I was drawing by default on this C plane. And there you can see what actually happened. Now, if I actually want to draw on this green box, I can bear in mind that it is on this right C plane. Uh, so I can get my box tool again and then draw in this window and then what do you know, the box appears on the uh, on the green plane. So this is great. Now I know how to draw on something that's oriented on a seaplane. Uh, but what happens if I want to draw on in a different, completely different orientation and I want to be very confident and quick about it? Uh, so, for example, on this purple plane, what do I want to do there? How do I draw on that? You know, so we already know that if I just start drawing uh, with uh, with my tool like this, I think, oh boy, I'm drawing on this uh, purple uh, rectangle here, and well, no, I'm not. I'm I'm drawing down here on this uh, seaplane. So what do I want to do? Uh, well, it turns out a, a real quick and easy thing in Rhino 8 is I can come down and click on Auto Seaplane to Object. Okay, there, and now I'm going to click on an object, and poof, the seaplane is aligned to this object, and you can see that if I rotate it around like this. Now if I want to draw a square on that object, get my square tool, draw on there, and what do you know, there it is, on the object. Well, you may say, well, so what about this stupid square on this purple plane? What, what can I do with this anyway? Who cares? And, well, here's an example. I can just come up to this uh, surface tool and uh, click this guy first and then click uh, this tool, which is extrude straight. And now I've got an extrusion off of this uh, purple plane. And, uh, okay, there we go. 
And now I have an extrusion that's set up at exactly perpendicular to this purple plane with virtually no effort. If it weren't for the, uh, the C plane and the orienting the C plane to this object, uh, this would have taken a lot more steps and uh, it may have been relatively imprecise unless I took even more than a lot more steps. Now, a potential worry is that, well, what happens if in the future uh, you want to get back to this plane, but you've uh, deleted the purple plane and you forgot what the reference point was and that kind of stuff. How do you get back to this uh, C plane? And, well, there's an easy way to do that. And you can come out here to, let's see, C planes. And you can say, uh, save the C plane. And uh, this little thing here is a floppy disk from a long time ago. People probably forget that. But, you know, older people know what this means. Young people, maybe not so much. Okay, so now up here it's saying uh, name for saved C plane. And I'm going to call this uh, purple plane. Purple plane one because I already saved a purple plane. And uh, so now we've got purple plane in there. And... So I'm going to go back here and say, okay, I'm going to set the C plane back to world top. So now the C plane is back to normal. And now if I want to get to my purple plane, I can just come in here and uh, say set C plane. And then I see I've got purple plane and purple plane one. And if I keep going down, then I can see, well, there's named C planes. You'll just have to trust me. It's off the screen. It says named C planes. If you click that, then you have the... Uh, the name C planes pops up here in this panel over to the right, and I can take this uh, purple plane and drop it on here, and uh, and oh look, it's aligned to purple plane. And if I want to get rid of purple plane, I can just do the usual delete and that kind of stuff. Uh, if I want to go back to world top, uh, then just drag that back on here, and and, and there you go. So it's kind of handy o to be able to save all these planes and reference back to these things uh, at a future time. You know, particularly if you've got sloped things like. Uh, say the side of a boat or something like that, and you want to continually reference that side, uh, that, then this is the way to do it. Okay, here's a, another cool little thing you can do with the seaplane concept. Uh, suppose I want to draw something at an angle to this purple thing. I'll just uh, get purple plane out and uh, drag that on there. So now you can see, yes, it's aligned to the purple plane, but suppose I want to draw things uh, reliably at some angle let's say at 30 degrees. So I'll come down here to ortho and right click that and then you'll have to trust me but off the screen it says set ortho angle and so I'll click that and then up here in the command uh, line it says 45. Maybe I want that to be 30 degrees instead. So there now it's 30. And I'll come over here to this uh, this little widget in the C planes uh, toolbar and it says rotate C plane. Okay, so there we go. Then I'll come over here and click right in the middle of this C plane. Maybe I'll go down to grid snap so that I make sure that I am right in the middle. And there we are right in the middle. And I'll turn off grid snap and uh, rotate this guy so I can see what's going on here. And uh, up on the command line it says end of rotation axis. You know, I can either type something in or I can... Uh, uh, make something happen like I want. Okay, so here I am coming up at a perpendicular and the two screens uh, below uh, verify that yes, in fact, this is coming off at a perpendicular and there's my reference point. Now it says angle of first reference point. Okay, so here's my first reference angle. Click that and then it says second reference point in the command line. So I'll just uh, come over here and uh, say 30 degrees and click and it's done. Okay, so now it rotated the C plane relative to the purple plane. And so you can see there it is. It's no longer squared up on this on the purple plane like it was. And so now I can come in here and uh, get my curve tools and again draw a nice rectangle in here oriented at 30 degrees to the original purple plane. And so there you can see, you know, there it is. And uh, now I can come in here again to surface tools, get my extrude straight, click that guy. And then I'm, uh, I have to remember to pr press enter. And then I'm extruding this thing. 
And there you go. I've got an extrusion at a reliable angle from the original purple plane, all with the, uh, the help of the seaplane concept. So this sort of wraps up this tutorial on the seaplane concept. There's a bunch more widgets up in the seaplane's uh, toolbar. Uh, you know, you can play around with those and, and see what you can do. Some of them are a little bit redundant. Uh, you know, like this one is uh, set seaplane to uh, surface, seaplane to object. Uh, that, that's what you can do down in this uh, auto seaplane thing down here in the bottom bar. Uh, and then other things, you know, that you're setting your seaplane uh, to world front, for example. And, and that's something that you can do uh, clicking here and then uh, set seaplane. And then you've got... Uh, world front. So uh, there, there's a little bit of redundancy, but it, it makes it really handy so you can get what you want pretty easily.